Hello Year 7, I'm Miss Strugwick. I am leader of dance uh, and I will be tutor for T1 in September. I'm going to be reading pages 141 to 145. Chapter 18, An Invisible Tree. Late that afternoon I went to the park. Where are you going? A suspicious Donovan wanted to know when he saw me sneaking out the front door. Mum said I had to make sure you don't get up to something crazy again. I promised him I wasn't planning to go and sit in the tree. The park was deserted when I got there. Everyone had left. Killer and the students, the choir, the cyclist, the pretty girl who had asked for my autograph, and the tree. The municipality had been there. Red face and rat face had done their job. In a way I'd expected that, but it was still a shock to see the stump sticking out of the ground. Once when I was seven or eight years old, I was in the play area at McDonald's and I saw a woman who had no arm, only a stump. The woman must have seen me staring at it because she walked up to me and asked with a friendly smile, do you want to feel it? I got such a fright that I started to cry hysterically and ran away to my parents. For weeks afterwards, I had nightmares about the woman's pink stump. That was what the tree stump looked like, like something you couldn't stop staring at, but that you were too scared to touch. A few leaves were lying on the ground. That was all that remained of the tree. I was no longer seven or eight years old. I was 13. Next year I'll go to high school. I no longer cried about everything, but the burning pain in my chest was so bad it felt as if I was going to suffocate. I clenched my teeth and my fists. It was stupid. I didn't know why I wanted to cry. It was just a stupid bloody tree. Thousands and thousands of them were chopped down every day and no one ever shed a tear about that. A tree should be forever, said a voice behind me. I quickly wiped my eyes. The caretaker appeared beside me, but I didn't look at him. But nothing on this earth is forever, he continued in a soothing voice. What's most important is that you and Layla made sure the tree was really seen. In today's world, that's more necessary than you think to be noticed. Too many trees and animals and people have become invisible or have simply disappeared without anyone remembering them. For a moment, he put his hand on my shoulder. You and Layla are welcome to pop in for a coffee any time. Then Uncle John turned around and walked back to the bowling green. I let out a deep breath and stared at the sawn off stump sticking out of the ground. I thought of Mr. Forey, who had said I had a rich imagination, and I thought of what the caretaker had just said. Maybe I could imagine that the tree had only become invisible. I pictured a rough, thick trunk growing out of the sawn off stump. The trunk grew taller and taller and taller. From the trunk sprouted thick, low branches close to each other, the kind of branches that are perfect to teach a little girl how to climb a tree. The trunk reached higher into the sky, higher and higher and higher, until it made you dizzy to look at it. It split into smaller and smaller branches. The tree was exploding into leaves. Birds came to sit on the branches, chirping and twittering. The wind rustled the leaves. The rough bark was basking in the afternoon sun. And somewhere on the bark, in a secret place among the leaves, appeared a heart with two letters inside it. I smiled. For though the last composition in my exercise book, Mr. Forey had written, keep writing such good compositions. I'm going to miss your talent next year. I got 95% for that composition. I hoped that the following year, I would get a chance to write a composition about a tree that had appeared out of the ground. It would be a good composition. I just knew it. The caretaker was right. It was great to be noticed, even if it was only because you wrote good compositions. At that moment, I thought I understood why Miss Merriman dyed her hair pink, wore pink clothes and walked from house to house to collect money for the SPCA. Why Joy shaved her head and her nose pierced and became killer. Maybe I even stood, understood why Mum spent so much time on her very important court case. Why Dad wanted a bigger sign for his shop. Why Adrian had been thinking up clever plans to make money since he was small. It was to be noticed. I smiled. It actually made sense. Okay, except maybe for Adrian. He was probably a born money grabber. It was no fun always being Marnus in the middle, the one who wasn't a good swimmer, didn't have hordes of girlfriends and wasn't allergic to schoolwork, the one who couldn't read fluently at the age of five and wasn't constantly busy with all kinds of money-making plans. I thought I'd finally worked out what made me sit in the tree with Layla in the first place. Most importantly, I thought I understood why Layla had started a petition to save the tree. Sometimes you need to be noticed, even if it's by your own dad, Marnus. I swung around in surprise when the caretaker called my name. He had stopped some distance away from me and had turned around. 
Can I tell you a secret? I nodded. That evening, your mum came to look for me at the bowling green. She offered me money to keep an eye on you and Layla all the time. I refused to take the money, but I promised her to take good care of you both. I could see she was terribly worried about you.